I am Julia and I am from Gutter Vacuum Systems. Um, some of you will have already seen some of my videos with regards to um, the poles or the cyclonic inlets, things like that. So hi, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to give you a couple of tips and techniques on our poles with regards to uh, pole assembly, maintaining the poles and um, the different nozzles that we have. And I will touch a little bit on the camera as well. So as you will know, or if you're new to Gutter Vacuum Systems, we sell carbon fiber and we have two aluminum pole kits as well. There is a right way to assemble your poles. Um, we do have clamped poles coming, clamped carbon poles coming. They will come later. Um, but if you're watching this now, this is what I'm gonna um, hopefully be able to help you with. So on the carbon and on the aluminum, I work with one clamp here, a Jubilee clip here, to secure this to the head of the pole. I don't use one here. Um, the reason I don't is if I've got one of our nozzles, nozzles are all 51 millimeter. If I put a Jubilee clip on here and I've you know, screwed it up, it's nice and tight, my nozzle is secure, whether it's the standard or the gulper, I lift my poles up into the height and actually the dials are overhanging can't get that up there I've got to bring that back down undo this clip put the crevice nozzle on there um, to be able to get into the tight access and go back up again so I actually prefer not to use a Jubilee clip here we do sell the larger clips um, the larger quick release brackets for on here some people use them um, I don't I, I prefer you know to just be able to do this I haven't lost a nozzle as yet up in the gutter um, each to their own. Pole assembly, when you're putting the carbon fibre together, the G is at the top, the green G is at the top on, on here. And there is a reason for that. So I'm just gonna lay this one down whilst I show you. So hopefully I won't bang anything around in here because it's a lot easier to do this outside, um, but it's a lot noisier. Now, the G is at the top. I'm going to show you what happens if you use these the wrong way round, like this. Okay, when you assemble your poles with a G at the bottom, the top pole sits outside here. Okay, when that happens, this lower pole is sat inside your top pole. If you can imagine your water, your muck, you know, the, de the debris that's all coming down, it's going to get stuck um, inside your pole, bear with me. So what will happen is if these are the wrong way round, as shown, and your outer pole is sat like this, the water is going to come down here between each of these poles and it will cause a seal. It will cause a vacuum. And that's not what you want to do because you'll cause yourself a lot of issues. So we use them this way and the top pole will sit inside here. So the bottom pole is on the outside. So any debris coming in is going straight through your poles into your hose, into your back. No issues are caused. If um, with your poles, if you get them stuck together, this is probably why. Okay, G is at the top. If you push these in too far, and some people do push them in too far, they will get stuck together. This is all you need to do. So just slot them in. So we've still got a little bit of movement and a tiny little push again. And that's, we haven't got any movement then. So your poles are not gonna spin. That's all we need to do. So drop your top pole in, still got that movement and that's it. So that's all you need to do. So you can now use your poles. Um, you know, you're not gonna have any issues. If You've pushed them in too far or you've used them the wrong way round. Right, sorry, I had to stop for a phone call. Right, so if you have your poles stuck together, so some people will grab, you know, one end of the poles and they'll, they'll twist and pull. Um, I actually find it more effective this way. So, you know, the other person's to the side of me with the other stuck pole and I will place my hands either side of the logo like this in the middle of the pole. Okay, the other person will stand next to me and do exactly the same. But what we will do is one person 
will roll forward and the other person will roll backwards. So we're essentially going like this, okay? And when you do that, you are both causing a stronger force than when you're like this trying to pull, okay? When you do that, you'll release the poles. Um, that's the most effective way. If you use the poles the right way round and you don't push them in too far, you shouldn't have any reason for your poles to get stuck together. So it is really important that you do follow that advice. To flush your poles, to clean them inside, anyone that does gutter cleaning, you will know your poles will change temperature with the type of debris that's coming down. So you'll know when there's muck inside that the, the weight will change and the temperature will change. So all you need to do is get a bucket or bowl of water, put your nozzle in, with your vacuum turned on, vacuum that water through and that will flush the inside of your poles. Um, you know, wash the ends of the poles after use, give them a spray with PTFE spray and they'll keep you going. Um, so the carbon is a, it's a 1.5 meter pole. It weighs 360 grams, it's 100% carbon fiber. So it's a strong pole, it's nice and light. Um, they're a good pole. They do take more looking after than aluminium. Um, carbon does have the flex because it is light. So I do like the lightness of the carbon. So some jobs I'll use the carbon, some jobs I prefer the aluminium. So that's the carbon. So the aluminium, um, we've got the lightest 1.2 meter aluminium gutter clean pole on the market, which I've, I've you know, discussed in other videos that I've done. Um, these poles, when you buy the 1.2 meter aluminium pole kit, these poles weigh 500 gram each section. This one's for 20 gram and that's a 1.5 meter. Um, so I'll touch on those in a little while. The 1.2, when you buy a pole kit, you get all the clamps, you get the nozzle, the green head, um, same with these, but you don't get the clamps. Um, each of these poles, you will have a series of poles, depending on which kit you've gone for. They will have a tapered end. So you can see here this reduced section. All of the poles will have that bar one pole, which is your base pole. This, as you can see, is completely straight. This is the one your hose cuff goes onto and your hose attached to your back. So that's your base pole for your um, machine end. So when you have the, um, the aluminium, I'll do it with this one as the head's on here. You take any of the tapered poles, so you reduce section any of those and insert the untapered end into the green head. Okay, secure that with that. You don't need to take this off then, that will always stay on one of those. Nice and simple. Then you'll work to the height that you need for the job. Your tapered end will always face downwards and this will always slot into your next pole. And you just fix that. I did that too loose. Fix that, that will stop any, any slipping any twisting okay usually about five mil five millimeter from the top but the reduced section sits inside here right. if you assemble same principle um same principle as the carbon if you assemble these with a tapered end facing up and that sits inside this section then you will know that this is in here when this is in here, the same principle, the water and the debris coming down, is gonna sit in between there, and that's gonna cause a seal, and that will have your poles get stuck. And it's not easy to get poles apart when they're stuck. So to avoid that, always make sure, terminology I use when I'm, I'm on the phone is male going down into female, that's the way you need to run. The debris will then flow smoothly all the way inside between each pole. Again, flush them after use. Keep the ends nice and clean. You can use a WD-40 spray to keep them lubricated. Um, these are a good pole. Why these over the carbon? Depends on your job. Um, those that are working at you know, 40 foot, 60 foot with these, um, probably tell you there's more um you've got that bit more control 
with these instead of the flex with the carbon. Um, they're a good rigid pole. So if you've got gutters with you know your grass that's in the corners, you've got your downpipes, and you really need to stab at the tough gutters, the 1.2 meter aluminium pole is the better pole for that. So when we had these produced um, to be the lightest 1.2 alley gutter pole on the market, we then pushed these to the absolute limit and had these made. So these are a 1.5 meter pole. They're a lot lighter, they're a thinner wall. Um, where those are 500 grams a pole, these are 420 grams a pole. So a 20 foot set of um, these weighs just under five kgs, including the nozzles and, and the, you know, the, um, the clamps and the head. This one with all of the attachments is three kilograms. And this one is the one that I lifted one handed from the ground to show you guys that, you know, they're really light. Um, I did challenge the flagpole guys to be able to do that. Haven't had one come back yet. Um, since that video, nobody has shown me they can lift the 25 foot one handed from the ground on um, on their flagpoles. So yeah, they're a light, they're a light pole. They're really good. And I, I don't eat wheat to bix and I, clearly see I don't go to the gym. So, you know, they're a, they're a really good pole. Um, we push the absolute limit to the weights with this as I said, um, so these are restricted to 25 feet. So these will cover all of your um, your two stories with your conservatories, your balconies, um, your garages. They will do your townhouses. If you need to go three story and above, this is not the right pole for you. You cannot add any pole to this kit because you will compromise the strength of the pole because it is the thinner alley. If you need to go higher, then you either go with the 1.2 meter aluminium or the carbon so they've, they've got their place uh, but they're not for every job so if, if you were going to have um sorry if you were going to have um you know, the predator or the gbs 3600 and you're wanting to do three stories victorians um four stories you know your apartment blocks your industrial units you're going to want a different pole if you're every day um you've got the compact or the 3000 and you're your main, um, you know, you're not interested in doing three stories. You can go with the lightweight, they're, they're absolutely brilliant. So they're the poles and your pole maintenance and how to assemble. Now I'm gonna run through the nozzles with you. We have a, a selection of nozzles for you. Every single pole kit will come with the standard dirt breaker one, a 35 degree angle. Some people will stab along the gutters with these um, as a general tool. You can work forward like that. Some people will put this on the side where you can draw the air in that way. So you'll have the standard and you will also have the crevice nozzles. So slightly smaller at the ends. Um, all of ours are 51 millimeter, but as you can see, you've got the uh, the crevice nozzle for the, uh, you know, you've got your tiles overhanging the gutters and you, you can't get the other one in. That's the one to use for restricted access. Now we also have a 51 millimeter gulper nozzle. So this is shaped to maintain the airflow as, um, as you're going along the gutters, it will keep that air going. The GVS 3600 and the Predator with the gulper uh, rips through pine needles. If you've not seen the videos on YouTube and Facebook already, check them out. Um, anyone who does gutter cleaning knows that pine needles are your kryptonite, they are renowned for blockages um, but with you know those facts and a gulper nozzle it makes mincemeat of pine needles so they're, they're worth a watch if you haven't seen them already so if you don't have a gulper uh, these are on the accessories page definitely recommend adding these to your kit um, now if you already have the gulper and you love it you'll know that not every single gutter you're going to get it in because of the uh, restricted access we also have crevice gulpers so as you can see, these are crevice gulpers and there are two designs, a forward facing one, which is brilliant. And we have a side facing one too. Um, again, you know, there's tight access. You can get these in, you can manipulate, but they're designed to maintain the airflow so that the debris that's stuck under the tiles, you can still draw that in to, uh, into your system. So those, all of those nozzles, they're all made with our aerospace aluminium and we have two stainless steel nozzles and um, some of you have already got these and um, you absolutely love them. These are the claws. 
We have a single claw nozzle, extremely popular. We also have a double claw nozzle. So these nasty piece of kit, and um, these do the jobs on the really tough root balls, the ones where you've got the roots, um, you know, your turf, the gardens that are up there, all kinds of plants growing out. Stab these in and the power of the vacuum, you will lock in and you will take that up. So you, you're just keeping your feet on the ground for even longer. These are £25 each. Um, so you, if you want to buy both, you can buy both. If you just want the one, you can buy just the one. So lovely nozzles and um, they do the job, the claw nozzles. So just a couple of other things to run through with you. Um, filters. So if you have the GVS Compact, the GVS 3000 and the GVS 3600, you will have a cloth filter. Um, that's the basket and this is the cloth filter. Now, if your, um, your gutters are dry and dusty, we recommend you keep this in the machine. Um, this will protect your motors from the fine particles getting in. So it's important to use these when your gutters are dry and dusty. If the gutters are wet, you can take this out. This will clog up really fast. So, you know, if you do use it when the gutters are wet, just hose it down and make sure it's completely dry before next use. Um, but this is for dry and dusty gutters. If you have the Predator, completely different filtration system. The Predator has a, um, a full metal deflector ring and it has a, a cartridge filter. So when your gutters are dry and dusty, keep the cartridge filter in. You can unscrew the bottom, take that out. And over the float valve is a blue foam filter. And that's for your wet use. So keep that in all the time if you like. Now that can be cleaned, um, you know, under, under the tap, you can clean that. So um, that's your filters, really, really basic. Keep them in when they're dry and dusty. You can take these out when uh, your gutters are wet. So I'm gonna to touch on cameras with you. We have two different camera kits. Um, the camera kit with a monitor those that like to have the colour recordable monitor, we have this one to use with your mobile device. Um, cameras, yes, they are really good to have, you know, for your site surveys, show your before and afters, you know, show that you've done the job. And also for your own website, your own Facebook and your own Instagram. So they have those advantages. Um, I don't always use them. I find it a lot quicker and a lot easier to feel the gutters as I'm going along. You know, I listen to the tone of the machine. I listen to the downpipe. I'm listening. You know, you can, you can feel when your gutters are clear. Um, but they are good to have as a visual for your customer. Reassurance that you, you have done the job. Um, I don't rely on them when I'm using them. And the reason is... If I've got these, you know, these are up high and, and my, my phone is on the bracket or the monitor is on the bracket and I'm, I'm watching this as I'm going along. I'm not aware of any cables that are above. Um, you know, festive times in commercial areas, you've got lights. So I like to listen to the poles. They're good as a reference, obviously. Um, not always a necessity. So this bracket for our camera, our camera kits all come with secure mounted brackets like this and um, in a protective aluminium case as well. Now this serves two purpose here. One, if this is on the nozzle and you did lose your, your nozzle, you've lost your camera as well, okay? So we have these brackets, so it serves as two purpose. One, it holds this in place and two, it holds your camera. So we photograph these as stock photos. Looking down, it's just a, a standard thing. Now, I personally don't like my camera at this angle looking down. If I'm going into a downpipe, if you can imagine I'm in the downpipe and the, tile, the roof tiles are overhanging, I'm knocking my camera on the roof tile. So I personally don't like it there. And if, I, you know, if I'm, I'm looking at the screen, I'm getting a really good view of the roof tile when I want to see the gutter. So this is what I do. I undo this. Slide this down to the side. Tighten that up. Now I've got, if I'm working down, hopefully you can see this. So instead of working up, 
and working to the side, now I'm getting a really good view down the gutter. So I've got the whole length of the gutter and I can see what needs to be done. And I'm working the pole straight down the gutter and I can see that from the ground. So I personally prefer the camera on that kind of an angle. So have a play. Everybody's different. Everybody works differently, as we know. That's just a personal favourite of mine. Um, and it is one of those, as you're doing your gutters, it's all about techniques. Your technique will be different to the next person. Um, so that's all of your, uh, your poles, everything, your assembly, your maintaining, the filters, the nozzles and the cameras. I hope this has been really helpful for you. If you do have any questions, you know, you can phone us, you can email us, you can drop a comment below. Uh, you know, you can message us privately if you'd like to in, in Facebook and Instagram. So we're always contactable. We're always here to support you. We'll always cheer you on. Um, you know, we'll always reshare your, your posts because we're, you know, obviously we're proud. Um, so there we go. Thank you for watching. Hope it's been helpful and um, see you soon.